Isn't the snow absolutely beautiful? It's like watching a winter fairy tale come to life right in front of my eyes. And honestly, it makes me wanna curl up with a good book and stay warm. Uh, one day I will bundle up and take you guys out there with me on the vlog channel and go explore the forest when it is covered in beautiful snow like this. But today, that looks kind of cold to me, so I'm very happy to have the opportunity to stay home with a warm cup of peach tea and a good book, which thankfully, since the new owl crate has arrived, I can do. And yes, once again, these are not sponsored. I just really love getting it because it satisfies the inner book nerd in me who did not get to spoil herself when she was younger, so now I do. And actually, I haven't been able to catch up on my owl crate books for a little while because you guys have kept me so busy with Wildcraft and Niche and Let's Go Eevee, and it's been amazing. But I'm hoping that pretty soon here, we're gonna be able to do a book challenge. I'm looking at the start of the next year to start a book challenge to catch up on our owl crates and possibly tackle some of my other to be read book list so i'm really looking forward to that if you guys want to follow along on that it'll probably be a little bit here on the main channel but also over on my vlog channel where because the snow is absolutely gorgeous there will probably be some beautiful videos of walking in the snow here in michigan coming up over there soon too so just a reminder that the vlog channel does exist you can find a link on the main channel page and hopefully in the video description if I remembered but let's get to the good stuff because it is very very cold and it's gonna be very nice to curl up with another book so this month's name is rising from the ashes which feels completely appropriate considering it is so cold and snowy outside it's kind of a beautiful contrast and I have no idea what's in here other than there is apparently a wax seal kit kind of like the one we got from the fairy loot box the other month and I'm very excited to see what owl crates spin on that is going to be so you guys ready this is gonna be fun okay books 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 We already have a huge towel sitting on the top. Let me grab the postcard that fell. Oh, this is beautiful. Check that out, guys. So here is the postcard for the Rise from the Ashes. This is going to be a spoiler warning. We're on the back. It will actually explain the different items that we are about to pull out. I always love looking at this in order to see what kind of details and thoughts and artistic choices went into picking the pieces that are in our crate. But let's go ahead and take the first item off the crate and I'll show you guys what it looks like under that. But here's the first item, very soft. I'm thinking this is probably a pillowcase. Probably a pillowcase. It's covered in fire and flames, which will do because it's so cold. And what do we have here? All right, hang on. There we go. So, as long as there is life, there is hope. An ember in the ashes. There you go, guys. Ember in the ashes. I know many of you guys really love that book. Beautiful pillowcase. This is actually really high quality, too. And it looks very warm. It's super soft. Normally, these are kind of scratchy. But once again, Elkrete has made it very high quality, very soft. I wonder if I could use this as a carry bag, too, which sounds really silly. But I always use reusable bags at the grocery store. And this might end up holding bananas in a twist of irony. But that's really cool. I have not read An Ember in the Ashes yet, um, but I've heard a lot about it. So where there is life, there is hope. I don't think I've read An Ember in the Ashes. I may have. I may have. This is why I need to start doing book review vlogs so that I can keep up with everything that's in here. So I'm not going to read the spoiler card for the pillowcase just yet because I want to show you guys. This is what was hiding under there. So this is the little mystery box we get to open now. So let's do it. Okay, we've got the pen that comes every month that you can add to your pin collection for the Ember and the Ashes. And then there's a couple things sitting right on the top. So we have, when you reach the stars and live there forever, all the fears will go and death himself will die. Ray Bradbury, the Halloween tree. What? Grow new life with this ceramic skull planter? <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. When you reach the stars and live there forever, all the fears will go and death himself will die. What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
for the rise from the ashes. I would have thought this would be like a Halloween theme. This actually my sister might love because this is totally her kind of theme. Not usually my kind of theme, but I wonder if I repaint it and maybe cover it with all sorts of vines and flowers and leaves, if that would feel a little bit more my theme. But there we go, so a ceramic planter where you can plant something new to rise from the ashes, which I actually think is very poetically done. So we have a ceramic planter right here. Let me see if I can glance on the spoiler warning really quickly. Use your exclusive planter to grow new life. Having little plants or flowers around can greatly help your mental health. I agree. <laughs> The Skull Planter was designed by Team Alcrate just for you. And let's go ahead and quickly see if I can... Okay, there we go. We absolutely love the Ember, an Ember in the Ashes series as it features some of the most resilient characters in young uh, YA. We created this pillowcase exclusively with designer Evie Bookish. May the quote serve as a reminder that there is always hope. And I think I have read Ember in the Ashes, so definitely like the entire trilogy. And I know that there's like a fourth book coming out. It's beginning to ring some bells. So let's just say that I'll hopefully be doing some like book review vlogs in the future too. Like I said, a lot of the book stuff I want to save for the next year so that we can make it a fun goal and have a little challenge to try to tackle at least a few of the books every month, despite the fact you guys keep me so busy on this channel with so many other things. But all right, let's keep going. So next up in here is a very lovely mystery box that's very shiny, very pretty. The Alcrate Exclusive Wax Seal Kit. Whoa, this is a nice box. What? Okay, so this tells us what? <laughs> That's purple. That's so cool. Look at that. Okay, I'm, I, I've not yet used my other wax seal from Fairy Loot yet. So I've been trying to wait to use them on the patrons uh, postcards that go out every month. So I'm definitely gonna look into that. But look at this, okay, it's a beautiful purple set of wax right here. And oh, it's a book. It's got a little book on the bottom, a little book with a heart. That is so cute and I love the handle. Once again, it's a handle that can screw right off so that if I wanted to swap out what kind of seals I put on, I can totally do that. But that's so nice. I might have to use that on the patrons postcards this month. That would be so much fun. Oh my gosh. Okay, so what does it say about the wax seal kit? Let's glance over it really quickly. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't want to like spoil myself. There we go. In times of trouble, reach out to friends. Write them a letter letting them know how much you love them and seal it up with this awesome exclusive wax seal kit. This kit is another exclusive item brought to you by Team Alcrate and designer Michelle Gray. So there we go, I love it. Wax seals are like getting really popular again. So I might have to dabble in them again and see what's going on. What is this? Rise from the ashes, eh? What? <laughs> okay, this is different. Wear your wishes on your wrist. There's so much to wish for, and these two cute bracelets let you do just that. Decorate paper beads on one side with crayons, markers, or pencils, and then write a wish on the other. Roll them up and string them together and wish for good things. This is new. Okay, so they've actually included a crafting kit this time, too. Let me see what they have to say about that. We thought it would be a lot of fun to include a little craft kit from Ann Williams this month. Write your secret wishes, hopes, and dreams on your paper beads. Whenever days get tough, your bracelet will remind you of things to look forward to. So that's kind of interesting. Rise from the ashes. Again, kind of a poetic take on that idea. I thought it was going to be a lot more literal, maybe with like incense and things like that. But, you know, if you want to get up again, you have to have hope. That's one of the reasons that I love curiosity. Because if you have curiosity, you have the capacity to hope. Because you have to be very hopeful in order to be curious, because you have to imagine a future that does not actually exist. You have to consider a situation that's not usually just the reality in front of you. And I really feel like curiosity and hope go hand in hand. And if you can nurture your curiosity, you are actually nurturing your capacity to hope. So I like that. And if you want to get back up, you need to have hope. Ergo, you need to have curiosity or you need to have some wishes where you can dream about something that doesn't actually exist. Coming back to curiosity. So you can see that's one of my philosophies in life. So I do like that. 
So, all right, and let's see. I know better than to be afraid of stories. Oh, it's a postcard. We have a postcard. I know better than to be afraid of stories. We have also got Professor Dumbledore hanging out right here with his Phoenix. Look at that. What a fun little bonus sticker tossed in there. Let me make sure I've got it. Oh, of course, because come on, a phoenix rise from the ashes. That's another theme they could have gone for too. When thinking of the phrase rise from the ashes, we can't help but imagine phoenixes. And what better phoenix to feature than Fox from Harry Potter? We absolutely adore the sticker designed by Suzanne Draws, which includes both Dumbledore and Fox. And we'll go into my joy journal today for sure. All right, I think that's gonna be, yes, okay. So that's gonna be everything from the craft end of things. And now we're going to pull out the exclusive book. So I'm not going to look, not gonna look. And here we go. Girls of Paper and Fire, which I have seen all over Instagram lately. So apparently this one is very, very popular. Uh, it also has a little sticker that has been included with it. And if I recall, the theme is pretty intense. So let me pull this out. In my land, we're known as paper girls, easily torn, existing only for others to use and discard. But they have something they've, there's something they've all forgotten about paper. It can light the world on fire and make it burn. A novel you need to read, the reviews say on the background. Really, really hefty. I like this. I like this. I love the, the cover design too. That's beautiful. Wow. That really evokes that rise from the ashes phoenix feeling for sure. Oh, and it's got a map. I love it when books have maps for their fantasy worlds because it just brings it all to life. Each year, eight girls are chosen as paper girls to serve the king. It is the highest honor they could hope for and the most demeaning. This year, there's a ninth. Instead of paper, she's made of fire. Leah is of the paper caste, the lowest class in Akira, uh, Akara. Even so, rumors of her golden eyes have piqued the king's interest, and so she is ripped from her home and taken to the opulent palace, a gilded prison, and her life is now beholden to the demon king's every whim. But as Leia dreams of escape, she does the unthinkable. She falls in love. Her forbidden romance, a meshed with an explosive plot that threatens the king's very reign, will force Leia to decide just how far she's willing to fight for her freedom. Lush, poetic, and utterly unforgivable, Girls of Paper and Fire is an extraordinary tale, reminding us of pure love and passion that can transcend even, transcend even the bleakest of fates. Huh. So this is, sounds a little bit similar to the other book we got from Owl Crate a couple months ago that was actually featured on the girls being chosen to go and become the wives, the concubines of the king. So it's kind of that same theme, which you see again and again and again in YA. And I'm actually extremely critical of that theme because I wanna make sure it's done right and not for shock value. I've heard really good things about this so far. That doesn't always translate into a book that I am going to enjoy or a book that I feel handles that kind of subject matter, which did kind of affect a lot of people in real life too, with the kind of grace and nuance that I feel that particular genre should. However, I've heard really good things about this. I am excited. If I seem a little hesitant, it's because I've been bitten by that theme in the past and I'm very critical of it and I wanna make sure it's done right. So we are gonna see what Girls of Paper and Fire are going to have to offer. Oh, this is so cool. Nikon oh, and here's the author right there. And speaking of which, we should have a letter from her. So I have high hopes. Alcrate usually curates very, very, very good YA. I am definitely excited to read this and I wanna see what kind of messages are in it and I wanna see how it's handled. A topic that I've seen, that harem style where you're trying to rebel against the leader in charge. I wanna see how it handles that and what kind of themes, messages, uh, th this approach to a familiar genre that this author is going to have. So I'm hopeful, I'm very hopeful. Also this cover is glorious. All right, dear Alcrate reader, what authors say is true. Every book you write contains a little part of you. As my third novel, which means she's probably got a little bit of that nuance down, I thought Girls of Paper and Fire would be like the others I'd written before, that there'd be aspects of what I know and think and feel and love and dream of here, scattered throughout the pages, moments of myself captured in words, a time capsule of the person I was at the time of writing it. 
But what I discovered with girls was so much more. It took all the beautiful and broken parts of me and held them in my hands, telling me, look, don't be afraid. Okay, that's very poetic. If the book contains even that much poeticness that the author has put in, <laughs> I'm gonna be very happy. The funny thing is, I had no idea when I started writing girls just how important it would become. I wanted to write a fantasy world inspired by my Chinese-Malaysian heritage, one that resembled the imagination of my multicultural upbringing that was created. I knew it would be a love story between two girls. Ah, okay, now you've got even more of my attention. I'm very happy now. And that they would be concubines to a cruel king. But I had no idea why. Now, looking back over the book, I see just how much of my life is embedded within its pages. I really hope my heart is laid bare in book form. Everything is represented. My passions and hopes, my opinions and fears, my life experiences, both terrible and wonderful. As often when speaking the truth, it hasn't been an easy process. And I know that Girls is not an easy read, but I hope when you read my words, you can feel the honesty, passion, and care that I shaped every page. And I might inspire you to be brave when speaking your own truths too. Don't be afraid. Love, Natasha. Okay. Okay. Now you've got me. I was trying to hold back. I was trying to rein in my usual excitement and kind of I'm sure this is a this is a familiar the harem genre is definitely one that I feel has been done poorly in YA before. I'm very critical of it because I feel like it sends uh, the wrong messages. It's usually like an easy, 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 easy way for people to try to score like feminist points without actually writing anything worth reading. But this sounds like it's going to have an entirely different angle and I'm very excited to read it and very excited to one day make a book review where I can tell you guys about it. So hopefully I can read this soon. If not, we are definitely going to be tackling it for my to be read challenge which we are going to be starting next year so i'm kind of i don't want to put it down now i i'm kind of i'm just going to put it in my lap because i'm actually really excited about this one no wonder i've heard so much about it all right so that being said i do have a really cool girls with paper on fire sticker that now i'm really hoping i get to use for good in my journal if, if i read it and it was really good it goes into my joy journal let's wiggle at the bottom all right, and at the very bottom, as usual, we have the little booklet that will actually tell us more about how the Owl Crate version, the Owl Crate version looks to be a very subtle, oh, it's gold. So the Owl Crate version of Girls in Paper and Fire is gold instead of silver. We have a wonderful interview with the author, which I will actually read and maybe add into my review of the book once I am done reading it. I don't want to spoil myself just yet. We have also got uh, more. Yeah, see, this is a book I'm highly critical of that kind of handles subjects like that. But I've heard of Ash Princess. Huh. So there's a lot of why I haven't dabbled in yet that we'll definitely have to look through. And let's see, let's see, let's see glancing over everything glancing over everything and finally we come down to the december theme to prepare ourselves for another upcoming box which i'm really excited about hopefully it will arrive in time for me to be able to do a video before we leave for our big trip in december but december's outcrate box is going to be the powers of illusion so this is interesting this is going to definitely opt for a bit of a darker theme than i was expecting to end the year on but hopefully that means they have a really good book waiting in the wings and I'm actually really excited to be holding this book I think this one's going to be really good I may actually start reading it today so <laughs> but thank you guys so much for joining me as always these aren't sponsored but if you are interested in trying out an owl crate box yourself as you can see we have a huge range of items to be honest probably gonna send this to my sister but the wax set definitely excited about and I think it'd be fun to sit down and do a little bit of the bracelet making every month it's something so different and I really feel like Owl Crate kind of pushes the envelope and tries to add in all sorts of new types of items so it isn't just like recoloring the design on the same thing every single month and if you're interested in that there's a referral link in the video description that will actually help every three referrals I get a free box which is kind of 
cool but it's not necessary just i hope you guys enjoy uh and i'm really looking forward to actually reading these books and being able to do some reviews with you so let me know if you have read girls of paper and fire already um uh, maybe no spoilers please just what you thought maybe some emoji ratings in the comments that would be very helpful and if you have anything that you think i should add and start compiling now so that i can get them from the library for a list of books to read that are like fantasy based which are my favorite adult fantasy and fiction definitely a favorite uh non-violent if possible um, like Brandon Sanderson, I've read everything that he's ever done. So anything like Brandon Sanderson is fantastic. I might reread some of the Tamora Pierce series because it's been a long time since I have poked through those. And I think many of you would love them. Uh, and if you just have those kinds of suggestions for either like YA fantasy or adult fiction and fantasy that you think I would enjoy, please leave them in the comments because I'm going to be compiling a list and I'm going to be getting the books from the library so that I can start reading them starting in January, which is going to be awesome. I startled the birds. So I hope you guys have had a great time. I hope that you too will rise from the ashes and believe in hope and curiosity and the ability to wish for greater things. And I hope that you have a good book to curl up with on these cold winter nights. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.